Divine Truth Paget Messages Discussions Discussions of individual messages received by James Paget between 1914 and 1923 from large variety of spirits. This is session 4, part 3 of the discussion How Divine Love Enters the Human Soul, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing how divine love enters the human soul and the three parts of the human by focusing on the second part of the message from Jesus on the subject given to James Paget on the 8th of May 1916. This session was recorded on the 26th of July 2017 from 11.30 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. All right. <laughs> We're back from our... Our little mini break. <laughs> mini break. <laughs> so let's continue. Uh, we're up to the divine love is a thing. That's right, yes. I'll just check that's true, but I think that is. Yeah, that's right. Is that right? Yeah. The divine love is a thing entirely apart from the nature of man, even in its purest state, and was never conferred on man as was the natural love. And consequently, when man obtains this divine love and it becomes a part of his soul qualities, his nature, as it were, changes and he becomes a new creature. An additional something has been conferred upon him and it becomes impossible for him to remain the mere man that he was and he always would be except for this change of his nature mm. Mm. Yeah. so here again you're saying that um this divine love god's love it's a whole new substance it's yeah. not some, and it's also a gift. You're really saying here, aren't you? Yes, it's like God is gifting a part of God's self. So God's divine love is a part of God's self, and God's gifting this part of God's self. And being an infinite being, He can gift an infinite amount mm. to any person who desires to receive it. And and the person who initially desires to receive it and who's never received it before does not have a part of this in them yeah, and it does not have a part of God's nature in them. And it's only by God conferring the divine love that they obtain a part of God's nature mm -hmm. and become, as it were, having a part now, having a true relationship with God yeah. by having a part of God's nature in them, having received that part of God's nature inside of them. Yeah. And he, and mm. he will say he, mm. the person becomes something there's a new potential basically you're saying here aren't you there's a new potential this person now has because without this gift this yeah. love he would have remained in a certain state he would always remain as he was created to be the image of god yeah never any more anything more yeah that's where he would always have been mm -hmm. but now not, not only does it, the instant you receive some divine love, the change begins. Mm. And this is why it's quite easy to tell if a person has received God's love or not, because there are, you can see some of the changes you, and particularly feel some of the changes that the person has made, even though they may still have other unethical or moral actions mm -hmm. or ways, you can tell when a person's received some of the love. And once, they, uh, once the love starts its work, if the person allows and works along with the love, yes, that's the, the love can continue it? flowing yep. in and continue doing more work. And, and it, it begins the metamorphosis process, if you like. So, so a person can uh, be in the hills and receive some of God's love and their metamorphosis has begun mm -hmm. and it will be completed at the time they enter the first celestial heaven, mm. which is which is the eighth sphere of the spirit world. And that's when their metamorphosis of uh, the first stage, if you like, of their metamorphosis is complete. And now they are always able to receive God's love. Yeah. yeah. Once. And the soul itself looks completely different, technically. If you if you can see the soul of a person who enters the eighth sphere and compare that with the soul of a person in the sixth sphere, yeah. you will notice major differences in the soul. There's even major differences in the spirit body as a result of the soul being different. Yes. There there are more more chakra points appear than the than the seven normal chakra points that exist in the sixth sphere spirit. Mm -hmm. And so you get chakra points that begin appearing. 
And by the time you've made the transition, there's normally 15 chakra points that have appeared by the time of the eighth sphere. And so, so now the person is, you can tell, not only are they uh, now a, a changed person, a changed creature, yeah. but they are a different creature. And in fact, this is what causes some confusion on the part of people in the sixth dimension. Mm -hmm. Because when these people who are now different creatures come to visit them, they see that they have a different energy systems in their body. They're able to examine that in their spirit body. Mm -hmm. And they go, hang on a sec, you're different than I am. Does that mean God made two types of creatures? Yeah. <laughs> well, in and they way, become sort of confused about it. <laughs> in a way, um, God has created really the potentials for us to, ex to exist as two different types of creatures, hasn't Correct. she? Correct, yeah. yes. So we, we can be... One this... being divine in yeah. nature and the other just being yeah. how we were originally created. It's pretty mind-blowing. I find yeah. the whole thing like, yeah. you know, wow. Yeah. Um, so, but this change into becoming a new creature, you're saying that's not complete until we enter the eighth sphere. Well, or... I, I, it's not right to say it's not complete uh, to, to, because it, it still goes on and on and on and on. Uh, yes. After that point, obviously. So at which point do I become a new creature? Is it the very first time I receive God's love? Well, there are milestones in your new creature appointments, <laughs> yeah. shall we say. The creature doom. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And, and it's like any gro the, gro the creature is still growing and changing. So, of course, there's going to be future milestones mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. but, but let's look at some of these milestones. These milestones, on the average, happen every, seventh, every seven dimensions yeah. of the spirit, in the spirit world. And the very first milestone is that you are now classified as immortal. You now know you're immortal. Mm -hmm. So you're you feel emotionally it. aware that you are. You're emotionally yeah. aware you are. Mm -hmm. You are now fearless. You now have no fear at all at that point. Right? So that's your first milestone. You've now, you've now worked through all the different issues, you now, and you now got to the point where you have no fears and you know you're immortal, mm -hmm. right? And of course, if it, it makes sense to you, if you know you're immortal, that's probably one good reason why you have no fear. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know that no, there's no way anyone, including God, could destroy you after yeah. that point. So now there is no reason for any fear either. Mm -hmm. So that's a great milestone, if you like, in your progression. And, and then uh, there are many more milestones. Obviously, each dimensional change, each new sphere, has a milestone of its own in this continual change that now occurs to the new creature. Mm -hmm. And that uh, continues, and there's quite a number of different milestones up until the 36th dimension, which is when there's a big milestone, and that is the joining of the two halves mm -hmm. as a new creature. And that, that is an incredible process in itself, mm -hmm. uh, where the two now feel themselves as one, rather than still believe or see themselves as two. Yeah. And, and so that's a huge milestone. But before then, there's still many milestones that we do. Each sphere, in fact, is a milestone. And every seven spheres is a major milestone mm -hmm. in our progress and development towards God's nature. And so... And, and, and remembering that God is an infinite being, of course, there's probably an infinite number of, of milestones. milestones. Yeah. And so who knows the potentiality of the now new creature, creature. Yeah. that God has through the ability to give God's love to the individual that God has formed. Mm -hmm. And so you could really say God first formed our first creature, the, the, the perfect natural human, mm -hmm. out of the clay, mm -hmm. the substances based about of, of the universal existence. Then God formed the second creature from his own substances. Yeah, wow. Which obviously then adds to the uh, ability of the second creature will far exceed the abilities of the first. And the second creature, God has inbuilt this process where this sincerity and longing must exist in the first creature before the second creature can come into existence. Yes. So in a way, I often feel how God has 
desired for us to know ourselves and our will and desire so much as as one of her children uh, but in doing that we then sort of like activate a new potential for our own existence yeah. through that self-knowledge and self uh, uh what do you call it actualization or embodiment of desire yeah. It seems like such a gift but it, but that it is God God's would love want that, that for performs me. the work. Yes, because it, it is. Uh, so the first, as I said, and I think if I go back over that, the first creature, the the image of God, the human soul, mm-hmm. the first creature is created out of the elements that God created that exist in the universe, mm-hmm. and the soul itself has been created out of those elements. Mm-hmm. But the second creature. Which of which the first creature can become the metamorphosis, if you like. Yeah. The first creature can become the second creature. To become the second creature, needs elements and attributes and matter directly from God, from God's being, mm-hmm. rather than from the elements of creation. In order to become the second creature. Yeah. And that's why the two creatures have vastly different potentials. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, one is of one matter. Is earthly, and earthly. Yes. You could almost call yeah. it, yeah. or you could call it the universal goo that sticks yeah. us yeah. together. And the other is divine. Mm-hmm. A part of the divine has entered and therefore transformed the earthly creature. The, the universal goo that has yeah. now been transformed because there's some of the divine that has entered this universal goo yeah. and changed it. Changed into, its, um, its very molecular substance. Yeah, substance. it's very substance. Yep. Uh, it's, uh, it's actually a substantial change at the elemental level occurs mm-hmm. because of it receiving now part of God's substances. So um, in the paragraph you say, um, when man obtains this love, it becomes a part of his soul qualities. His nature changes. Yes. And he becomes a new creature. Yes. Really what you're saying, it sounds like, is that from the first instance we receive divine love, from that moment onwards, their metamorphosis has begun yep. and it potentially could continue infinitely. Yes. Yes. But our nature changes from one nature, which is the human nature, right? Yep. And that is very, very different to the divine nature. Mm. And, and so, you know, it's quite, as I said, quite easy to tell when a person has received some of God's love because you can see sort of elements or bits and pieces of the divine beginning to appear yes. as well. And given that, you know, we've talked a lot in this series of discussions about how people can then decide to act in disharmony with that love and how painful that is Mm -hmm. because it's such a there's like a it's like a um a pebble in your your shoe surely yes yes, it is like that (laughs) it's something that's so different in substance that's it's a pebble in your shoe you can't take out (laughs) yeah it's so alien to what you want in your shoe um, and it, it's rubbing all yeah, the time. It's going to force you to walk a new way sooner or later. <laughs> and, and that is true, isn't it? Yes. It, it will eventually, once that substance is received, yes. it will eventually. It will cause a, cause change, a change in your behaviour, your the way you think, the way you feel, mm-hmm. the way you see everything, the way you respond to fear. Mm-hmm. They're all going to be different. So. so do you think that ultimately a person who receives some of God's love for the first time and no matter what they choose to do after that, whether they act in harmony with it or act against it, eventually they will become uh, at one with God in terms of love. Yes, it's impossible really for them not to after that. There's too many forces now, internal and external. Yeah. Because remember, God's still got all the external energies and the instrumentalities, instrumentalities yeah. that, that are still influencing your soul to make change. But now on top of that, there's this internal motivation now, yeah. whether you're aware of it or not. And many people in the first instances are not aware of it, but there's these internal things that happen. Yeah. 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 
that start motivating change as well. So now, besides the external influences, you have internal influences. It's yeah. very hard after that to, <laughs> yeah. to actually stop the process. To stop it, mm. which is great. It takes a lot of effort Yeah, to stop it. Mm. And um, we talked a little uh, a few recordings ago about the closing of the celestial heavens. Mm -hmm. Is it your? I know you don't know the full truth about that because only God does. Mm -hmm. um, but is it your opinion that someone who's received God's love once uh, cannot be excluded from those celestial heavens? Yes, I'm certain of that. So even if they're not at one with God in love, when the celestial heavens close, supposedly, yeah. sort of. Yep. Yeah, close. Close. They would still. Not, it not would still be, not be closed to them. No, it can't be closed to a person who's received God's love. Yeah, can't be closed. Yeah. So you could say the closing is selective. What they start. <laughs> not selected by God, but rather selected by the individual. Yeah, and that's mm. the really important point about that. It's mm. that God. God wants us God's to choose. God's offered it to everyone. And once we make a choice, God respects that. Yeah. yeah. And if people refuse it, well, that's okay. They'd yeah. still be very happy, of yeah. course. They'll be in the sixth sphere, the perfect natural man, very yeah. happy, as we've already discussed. Yeah. But they will have made the choice to to have the celestial spheres close to them. Mm -hmm. yep. mm. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Let's keep going. I know that men do not understand the distinction between a man with only the natural love and one with the divine love. But the distinction is so great that the one, when possessed to a sufficient degree, makes the man a part of divinity, while the other, no matter how fully possessed and how pure it may become, makes man merely man, though a perfect one. <laughs> though, though a perfect one. <laughs> still just a mere man. Still a mere man, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I thought here perhaps we could talk a little bit about the distinction between God's love and human love. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that there's a great distinction in terms of not only substance, uh, but power, potential. Yeah. Um, to me, it almost seems creative. like there's an infinite number of distinguishing factors between the two. And, you know, you could you could probably, again, talk for years about the distinguishing factors between the two. But if we look at some of the very basic ones, mm -hmm. um, you know, human love is very fickle in, in that you can withdraw giving love from somebody and, you know, give it to somebody else sort of thing. And, you know, it's often, you know, you can fall out of love with somebody and fall in love with somebody, as the saying goes. Mm. Were you ever really in love with them if you can fall out of love with them? Well, you're in some form of natural love with them, aren't you? Yes, I suppose. But, um, but God's love is permanent. It's not God's version. And, yeah. and when you've received uh, God's love uh, inside of your soul, the love for your soulmate becomes permanent. And so, yeah, so, so, so I was just about so, to say that you so, can't... So you can't fall... Once you fall in love with your soulmate, which is usually occurs through receiving some of God's love as well, yep. you will never receive, fall out of love with them. So just a clarifier, though, is it true that I can never have a true soulmate love if I've not yet received God's love? Yeah, it is actually true. You can have a soulmate love of a kind, with your soulmate mm -hmm. without receiving God's love because you can sort of be together, live together in a sixth sphere. But that's not what God designed it to be. God designed it to be you as one, yeah. which is a very, very different creature than a person living as, you know, two, yeah. two halves living in a different, in a different sort of way. Mm. And so, yeah, you know, just that one distinction is immensely different. And, and the joys associated with, the soulmate love after a person's received God's love compared to the soulmate love before they've received God's love, they're completely different. Mm -hmm. Like everything's completely different. And while it is still quite permanent for the people who are in the, in the sixth sphere who have met their soulmates, they recognise them as their affinity and so forth. Mm -hmm. And none of the joys that are associated after that in the seventh, eighth and so forth spheres can be experienced. Yes, yeah, so there's a quality, there could be a natural love existing between soulmate pairs. Which is a natural 
it, and that is a natural love that binds soulmate pairs. In fact, it's, it's the only long-term love that exists. Okay, so... It's not, it, even a mother's love is not a long-term love. The only real love that exists permanently for the perfect natural man is going to, be, in the end, be the love that he has for his soulmate. And I'm not really referring to the general love he has for everyone else. I'm talking about the specific love for a, a specific individual above all else. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's going to always be for the soulmate. Whether you're one with God or not, that's going to be the case. But once you become a one with God, you are now not two halves operating independently as two halves who have some love for each other, but rather you are one being. Mm. And the love is in, and, and the two halves are indistinguishable mm -hmm. once you enter the union state. So that's a long way after the eight sphere, but of it course. does occur. But yeah. it does occur. And, and, and this state is, as you can imagine, immensely more in pleasure, pleasurable than what a soulmate couple could experience in the sixth sphere. And in fact, it's, it's impossible to unify with your soulmate. Unless, you Unless you've received God's received love. God's in love. fact, to unify, God designed it to completely unify as two halves of the soul. It requires God's love to complete the unification. Mm. So, so it's only the new creature that is capable of a soul union. Yeah. The human, the first creature, the image, the perfect natural man as a creature is not capable of a soul union. Mm because it's not received enough of God's elemental nature in order to make the transformation, in order to fit together. Yeah. So, you know, that's just one aspect yes. of how the two are immensely different from each other. Yes. And that alone is, has it to, to, to bring intense happiness to a person, let alone any other aspect. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So then uh, you're talking about the natural love of in humans mm -hmm. being quite fickle. fickle so are you saying that there is no fidelity in love until divine love is well it's a part of human nature for there to be no real fidelity in a lot of their loves and what i mean by that is let's say you as a in the perfect natural human decide today that you're going to make your life's work uh, you know teaching children mm -hmm. It's highly likely that some point in the thousands of years of your future that you'll decide that you've had enough of that now and that you're going to choose to do another thing instead of that yeah. as your future. And I could have loved the education of children or the working with children. While you did it. And it wouldn't have been a false love then? No, no, no. But, it, but it sort of loses its uh, luster. Potency, yeah. And potency and, and it... And it it's not so much as joy, you know, but it more it loses its luster, it lo loses its newness, and you start seeking a new experience. So is that part of the inbuilt process that God has created for us to develop, that our loves actually do change as we develop? Or well, God's done that for a number of reasons. One of the reasons, in fact, is to show you that there must be something beyond your condition. To create an aspiration. To create an aspiration. <laughs> for the higher That's things, one of God's yeah. reasons why he did it. Yes. Um, so that, you know, you, you can see that the human nature, the human love, it, and, and we're here I'm talking about desires for specific things, which are our loves, you know. These, these come and go mm. as we're a human. But, but as we progress towards God, we start seeing, ah, oh, they come and go because they are not sufficient for my complete happiness. Mm -hmm. That's why they come and go. Mm -hmm. and, and yet, when you go down the path of receiving God's love, every new choice you make is now complete for is sufficient for your complete happiness. complete happiness and it keeps growing in its capacity of completeness so what you feel is complete today feels you feel bigger tomorrow bigger the next day you know and so forth yeah. and that's not what it's like when you're in the sixth sphere and you're in sixth sphere you engage a certain course of action and you may engage it for many hundreds and sometimes thousands of years but eventually you feel like it loses its luster mm -hmm. and you searching for a new experience mm -hmm. and this uh, underlying feeling in fact uh, is is a part of your the the image of god has created god's created you in this image to have that so that sooner or later you would be just 
you, you, you would not be satisfied with just being the perfect natural man anymore. It's so that you'd realize that maybe there's something else that I can, that is going to bring even higher amounts of satisfactions to me than being the perfect natural man that I now have been satisfied for for the last 10,000 years or so. Yeah. And, and this causes you then to desire something more. Yeah. Now, imagine for a moment, if you then had that realization and realized that your opportunity to have what you desired had been lost through yeah. your previous experience of choices. Through your previous decisions, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it would be pretty hard. It, it would be quite a difficult thing wouldn't mm. it, to go through emotionally, mm. to, um, to realise that, wow, I hope God, at, hope, uh, you, would, you would definitely feel, wouldn't you, I hope God offers that again. Yeah. And once that hope develops inside of you, then there's a high likelihood at, point, at some point that God's probably going to offer that again. Because God's so sensitive to desire, hey? Of course. That's part of, that's how I sort of um, feel about the closing of the celestial heavens. There'll be an opportunity for everyone to exercise desire in one way or another. And then when God is satisfied, there's no remaining desire in these people to relate with me. Mm -hmm. I'll close the heavens. Yep. But as soon as there's another spark of desire, well, God is God's going to feel it sooner for or later. Sure. Yeah, God will so respond. So. It's so unlikely. How long that takes, who knows? But. Given what we know about God, mm. that um, God wouldn't respond to Correct. that. In, Correct. As you say, Correct. we don't know how long it would be. But. We also don't know, though. See, a person who becomes used to finding a new luster, mm -hmm. a new a new activity as a way of receiving some level of satisfaction, mm -hmm. generally engages in just engaging a new activity. Mm -hmm. So so they don't consider that maybe there's something beyond every new activity that they could engage. Yep. It's sort of a diversion. Yeah, sideways so a person thing. who's used to going like this, engaging new activities, mm -hmm. has a high likelihood of engaging new activities for a long period of time mm. before they realize, wow, I've done a million activities now yeah. or a thousand activities now for a hundred years each. Yeah. And I'm still not feeling the satisfaction or I'm not feeling the satisfaction anymore that I used to feel mm. before they start realizing it may be there's something more than that. You see, so it may be, like I said in the, in the discussion about closing of celestial heavens, it may be tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions of years before God reopens mm. it again. We, we don't know because a person who is used to engaging this kind of decision-making process in order to receive satisfaction is highly likely to continue that for a long period of time. Yeah, right. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, is there any other distinctions you'd like to touch on now uh, between, um, I mean, that's a fairly massive <laughs> amount of stuff you've kind of covered already, but. The perfect natural man is very focused upon um, ethical behaviour. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is that he's focused on what is the right thing for me to do? It's often called, uh, in the Greek terminology, it was often called agape love, you know, love based on principle. Yeah. So, so the perfect natural man is a very principled being generally where they realize the principle demands that they must engage this particular behavior. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. and, and often uh, it's a mixture of emotion and intellect that causes that kind of engagement and, uh, and that's what drives them. The, perfect, the, the person who's progressed beyond that point doesn't just engage whether something's ethical or not. They have a huge desire and passion within them to do it yeah. as well, which brings them a far greater uh, level of uh, feeling of reward once they've accomplished the task that they were passionate about doing. Mm -hmm. uh, the perfect natural man finishes up believing he did the right thing. Mm. The person who's in a celestial spheres not only knows they did the right thing, mm -hmm. but feels really great about having done the right mm. thing, which is a very different state, right? The, so, sorry. So the, the person in the natural love state, though, mm -hmm. they would have compensatory reward 
for having done the right thing? Well, there's no compensatory reward beyond that which they have already experienced. Yeah, that's interesting. So therefore, there's no new experience of compensatory reward. Mm. It's just the same experience of compensatory reward they've already had. So how do you start? How do you feel a higher level of satisfaction when it's the same level of compensatory reward? Yeah. You see, everything yeah. becomes more stagnant. Mm -hmm. And while there is some level of satisfaction and some level of reward and some and all these things, it's not beyond that which you've already experienced. Mm. Whereas every new thing that a celestial spirit engages, the rewards are far beyond what they've already experienced mm. every time. So is this sort of this infinity uh, quality principle, principle yeah. to the divine love, yeah. which is not present in human love. Correct. Or in the workings of the spheres governed by human love. Correct. Mm. So, so there's a huge change Every, so now, like anybody who's spent much time with me knows that I'm enthusiastic about almost everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can attest to that. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's like, and every new thing that I engage, um, and I'm always engaging new things, it's very rare for me to do the same thing a mm -hmm. second time or a third time. Mm -hmm. There's always new things being engaged, but every new thing brings extreme higher reward Yes, as so well. as, as distinct from a natural love spirit who is also always engaging new things, but you're talking about the level of the same satisfaction reward. and the level of... Uh, it's not that it's only a level of satisfaction. Because you've now learned another aspect of God's uh, nature and therefore mm -hmm. grown in God's love more mm -hmm. and a stronger desire for God's love, the rewards are more powerful mm. and they, they are more satisfying. They're always overwhelming, in fact. They're more overwhelming than they, they are when you're in the sixth fear state after you've done a hundred different things mm. of the same kind. So could we say, and again, this is a lot about the infinity principle, but could we say then that the satisfaction received in a sixth fear state is not overwhelming, whereas for someone who is... It's overwhelming is the first few times. ...progressing towards God... <laughs> yeah. Uh, whether they be in the eighth sphere or below or above, yeah. there's always an overwhelming uh, each new endeavour and the satisfaction each new endeavour brings is always an overwhelming experience. Or even the same endeavour. Uh -huh. You have more power yes. to continually engage the same endeavour, which also brings an ever-increasing reward. Mm. You see, that doesn't happen in the sixth sphere. Mm -hmm. In the sixth sphere... You, you, you might engage the same endeavour a hundred times, it's always going to be exactly the same reward. Yeah. But when you engage the same endeavour as you're growing in God's love, every, every same endeavour doesn't feel like the same endeavour anymore. Mm -hmm. Even you can engage the same thing and it feels different. Yes. Every time yeah. because you're growing. So this ex there's an experiential difference even mm. with seemingly the same external stimuli or mm. same external activities. Well, it's even not the same external activity because you have it's greater changed. power to yeah. actually do that activity, mm. even though it's the same kind of activity, you have the power to do it to a higher extreme. Mm. So that was one of the things I wanted to talk about in terms of the distinction between human love and God's love. There's obviously a massive differential in power in and of the, the love. The being thing. themselves, even. The, the, the love beings itself and the, and the love themselves. But mm. you're also talking about in terms of the experience, the yeah. power of the experience. Yeah. But if we talk about the substance itself, like me loving you and God loving you and you receiving both of those loves, there's going to be a massive difference for you, isn't there? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it also reflects upon what I'm capable of doing now. Yeah. So this is another advantage. So, so a six fear spirit might live on a planet, right? But a but a eighth or ninth fear spirit, and you can get to a higher creation. You can create the planet yeah. <laughs> for other people to live on. <laughs> so what's going to be more, you know, it's going to be more enjoyable. <laughs> Probably the creation of the planet, right? Yeah. And so this is what it's like. It's like, you know, comparing the two states, eventually the two states become so far removed from each other that it's that you know you're a completely different thing now. Yeah. You're a completely different creature now yeah. than the original. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Pretty cool.
as you yeah, say, that's another fun. thing that um, you could talk about for hours. Well, yeah, with years. But, um, you know, obviously for yourself and myself, we're still going through memories of all the things we've lost, which is a lot of where our pain is, you mm. know, going through the, the losses that we've sustained in returning to the memories of that. But as we uh, go through the memories of those things, we also remember the things we could do and, and the things that we've done. And that helps greatly in terms of being able to help others see what the potential is. The potential, yeah. So I sort of see that, you know, once we, once we open our eyes properly <laughs> to you know, what we've experienced, we will then be able to de hopefully even demonstrate to others what yeah. the experience is like mm -hmm. rather than just talk about the experience. Yeah. At the moment, we're still talking about the experience because we've still got quite a lot of pain associated with the experience yeah. which we need to go through. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Pain, not pain about the experience, but pain about the contrast <laughs> yes. yeah. between that yeah. experience and the one we're now having. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. 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 Okay. So who, who, very different, very different from one another. It's very important that every person listening, including the spirits listening to our conversation, understand that you know there is a the distinction is so great that it's unimaginable mm. but from most people in a in a in a perfect natural love state yeah mm. yeah. yeah 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 okay do you want to keep going whosoever will pray in sincerity for the fl inflowing of this divine love will receive it it is not a respecter of persons and the sincere aspirations of the soul of any man, be he prince or a peasant, rich or poor, will invariably cause this love to come into his soul and change his nature so that he will become a new creature and not one subject to death forevermore. Mm. Mm. And what I love about this part is that you're really saying that all people can receive God's love. So even though we have to prepare our soul, mm -hmm. which is an operation each of us must engage, we must engage. God's helping us. Mm -hmm. He's got all of his instrumentalities helping us every, every moment. But everyone can do it. Yes. So there's no one who can't do it. No. So there's no two creatures that God created in the beginning. We're all one type of creature that all have that potential. We all have that capability within us. Yes. Yes. Um, and even people who have uh, now been harmed on earth through things like, you know, they've got intellectual disabilities and other things like that, they will all be given the opportunity. Because mm. it, remember, in their sleep state, they don't have those disabilities. Yeah. So they still can have the potential of receiving God's love too. God. It's just a wonderful thing God has done. It doesn't matter what limitations you have in your earth existence, mm -hmm. you still have the potential of receiving God's love. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how clever you are or how silly you think you are. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how, you know, rich or poor, like I said, whether you're a man or a woman or, you know, any of these things, none of these things matter. Even what religion you... What religion you are. You are. Or way. if you're atheist. Yes. <laughs> Still love's available to everyone. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, but yet again, the essential ingredient is our sincerity. Yes, well, preparing the soul, you know, that's yeah. the essential thing we need to do. We can't, you know, love can only enter a soul prepared. So, you know, unless we're willing to prepare the soul, then that's where our, that's where our will is engaged, our yes. desire is engaged. Yes, and often on earth, we seem to begrudge that preparation stage. Most people do. And the yeah. instrumentalities that are acting upon us yes. often... Um, we fight them. We fight them. Actively. We whinge about them. Yeah, we, actively, we feel yeah. like it's a it's a bad system. Yeah. 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 And, not, you and know, yet, even God, then when we're fighting them, He's going, "Oh, silly man, you're just fighting them." Yeah. <laughs> I've, got still, I've got instrument. I've got instrumentalities, like yeah, instrumentalities that, that can deal, deal with, with that, that as well. <laughs> <laughs> you can fight for a while if that's what you want. Yeah. Sooner or later, you're going to know it's available. Yeah then it's going to get down to an individual choice about whether you yeah. want to do something about yeah. its availability yeah. or not. Yeah. Mm. And it's sort of like God is like we're like a hard piece of clay that's quite cold in the fridge and then, you know, <laughs> God's just kneading and kneading and as it warms up we get softer Like in softer the Bible it calls it, got, we're, heart, we're got a heart of a rock, yeah, <laughs> a heart of a stone and we're yeah. turning it into a heart of flesh and that's really what God's trying to do He's turning yeah. our stone like... <laughs> resistance into a heart of flesh that's more malleable and yeah. easy, easily, for, you know, more yeah. easily in, in, 
influenced, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And as I shared before the break, it's wonderful to reach a point where you start to love that God has is needing away at me. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Squeezing away at that heart to you were stone, I'm make it a bit softer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, very good. <laughs> All right. Okay, do you want to continue? Sure. The merely intellectual prayers are not efficacious, for it does not have any effect in opening up the soul, and neither does much of this praying do the work. Mm. One little moment of this true praying will be more effective in causing this divine love to flow towards the soul than a whole lifetime of idle repetition of prayers that come from a source merely mental. And let me here say that the mind is not the soul and much less God. <laughs> I just wanted to reiterate that. <laughs> yes, because you talked about that a lot in the first, in the first message. Half, yeah. 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 Um, but this, I mean, that's just a powerful... Uh, we've covered a lot of this previously in our previous yes, discussions, yes, but yes. this this thing that the intellect is only a tool, mm. um, which we talked a lot about in our first discussion, and not really and even that, a tool of prayer. No, because uh, because remember, prayer has to come from the soul, which is this emotional place with inside of yourself of desire. Uh, prayer, which is from the mind, doesn't have that. You know, it needs to be a feeling you have, a, 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 which is a desire within you. And and that's a prayer. And when God feels that desire, he goes, wow, that's wonderful. I love that. And he <laughs> yeah. always rewards that desire. And if the soul has been prepared through the beliefs of, uh, you know, and also the desire for sincerity, then every time you have this prayer and, and you can maintain this kind of prayer quite a lot initially it can be might, might be on and off hit and miss but after a while you get to the point where you start realizing that you can have these kind of desires all the time mm. right now you have the ability to start receiving god's love all the time mm. because it's the prayer that brings it yeah the openness of the soul to enable it it's inflowing and as long as you still work in harmony with the love already received, yes, it will not be blocked to you. And that's just like amazing, isn't mm. it? That you all you have to do is develop this sincerity and then decide I'm not going to act in disharmony with this love. Mm. And it's a constant flow of love. Yes. But what normally happens in practice is we receive some of the love and we're quite challenged <laughs> about what it's now asking us to do. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and so then we enter points of resistance where we no longer want to ask for more. In other words, any new asking is not sincere anymore Yeah. because the, there's a fear in us that has to go, Yeah. that has to be felt to go. And yeah. we have control of that. God doesn't have control of that. Yeah. God doesn't control what's in our soul and letting things go. We have to choose to let them go. Mm. So we have beliefs in ourselves that we have to choose to let them go. Mm -hmm. And while the divine love in us helps us determine what is a correct belief and what isn't, emotionally, frequently, we have uh, feelings in us, particularly related to fears, that we're unwilling or do not desire to feel. And that is what causes the divine love now to stop flowing yes. for a while. While we sort that out, <laughs> we have to sort out our preparedness yes. now of our soul. Our soul's now going, no more, no more, no more. <laughs> and we have to now work out why we're going, no more, no more, thank you. you yeah, know? yeah. And work and get to a place of going, yes, please again, you know, yeah. like, where we really want to feel God's love enter us again. So, so that requires working through the issues, uh, a lot of issues. And, and, and of course, uh, love, the, God's love has intricate issues which are not uh, always obvious in, in re with regard to ethics and morality. Yeah. And therefore, we, you know, quite, quite frequently, we need to discover those, what those mm. issues are, which the love helps us do, that exists within us already, helps yeah. us to do. But God's instrumentalities come to play again, mm -hmm. helping, helping us, us to, see. to see these new factors that we need to become aware of and how we're now preventing the love from flowing. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we need to be willing to change. Mm -hmm. It's the willingness to change. And the willingness to release the old. Yes. To you know. let go of, I yeah, should say. Yeah. And that's where we yeah. have our most, most of our yeah. problems. We're unwilling to release the old garbage yeah. to let the love in. 
we are unwilling to release the old beliefs, the old emotions, the old, and particularly the emotions. Beliefs are relatively easy to give up if there's no emotional context to them. Yeah. But when there's an emotional context from our past in them, mm. they are very difficult to give up. They require yeah. uh, em emotional release in order to give up. Yeah. And many of us are very resistive to emotional release, mm. although the love existing inside of us has oh. softened our heart a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we often are still quite uh, rigid yeah. and, and not wanting to engage the release for a period of time. And that's what slows our progress. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Very mm. important, isn't it? This mm. letting go in order to let in. Yes, it's like, you know, we're often given the illustration, you know, where people, if they've got your hand fist closed, you can't hold something, you know, yes. obviously, you know, somebody gives you something, it's just going to fall off your hand. Yeah. But if you've got your hand open, you can receive. And, yeah. and quite frequently, when it comes to God, we, we go like that. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, we feel quite overwhelmed about what that now is sort of almost indicating to us that we need to do with our lives. Mm. And stress that stresses us out, it triggers different fears and particularly triggers different emotions that we do not want to feel. And so we got like that. Yeah. And now the conditions of uh, absorbing God's more of God's love don't exist anymore. Yeah. Until we go like that again, and yeah. until we work through the reason why we did that, yes. why we contracted, why we withdrew, yeah. They, they are our important things that we need to do. That's the bit we have to do. That's what we have to do. But um, just to make a distinction, we don't have to fully let it go. We just must be willing to let it go yes. in order for God's love to enter us. Is that true uh, or not? Well, it depends on what the issue is, because if it's an issue of our own creation, mm -hmm. then we will certainly have to fully let it go. Yes. If it's an issue of someone else's creation, Mm -hmm. then there are certain things that occur that will help us let it go, yeah. where that God can assist us to let it go. In other words, yeah. if it's a creation of our own that's out of harmony with God's love, then, then justice dictates that we are the person that need to make the change. Yeah. If it's something that somebody else put inside of us through mm -hmm. their treatment of us or their you know, feelings towards us or our parents or grandparents and so forth in terms of mm -hmm. what was passed down to us, then, then there, there are less things that we need to do in order to make the change. We just need to be willing to let go of the pain associated with that and then God's love can enter and assist in that process. Correct. So it's the difference between feeling and dismantling the pain that I've created in my own parenting yes. as opposed to the pain and um, stuff that I inherited as yeah, I was... Well, it's not that distinct because even in your own parenting, a lot of that parenting came from pain from Absolutely. your parents. So, yes. so, it's, so not, it's good that God measures God this measures all us. that. Yeah. You know, we don't yeah. need to worry so much about that. We, we need to just focus more on our desire. Preparation. And, uh, to prepare our soul and continually prepare our soul. Mm -hmm. Every time we contract to realise why we're doing that yeah. thing of contraction and to work our way through the issue of why we're contracting. Mm -hmm. That is our control. That's yeah. what we have control over. And and just to go back to the paragraph, really you're talking about prayer and you're saying the prayer state is the this state. Yes, Yeah. emotionally. And, yeah, and we can't use our mind to no, get into to get, this you state. can't do that. And you're really even saying, I heard you say that, the intellect and the mind are pretty much useless in this prayer business. There's nothing really, even the realisation you spoke of early, uh, earlier about um, realising that you can long and pray continually for God's love and receive it, even that is not a mind-based recognition, is it? No. See, this is about the makeup of the soul. And this is something that, you know, Paget struggled even to understand himself, but something that came through in the pageant messages quite strongly all the way through the messages is the makeup of the soul is that the soul drives the mind in the end. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the key is to stop trying to get the mind to drive the soul. In mm -hmm. other words, trying to get the mind to drive your emotions mm -hmm. and start being honest about what emotions you actually have. Mm. You see, this is a point of sincerity again, right? So, so a person who's trying to receive God's love but doesn't is usually trying to use their mind to engage a feeling of, I want to receive God's love. 
but the feeling of I want to receive God's love doesn't exist because there's issues of love that they have yet to resolve. There's painful issues. There's anger that they've let to let, let, yet to let go. Yeah. They, they don't want to let those things go, right? So their true feeling is might be anger. Yeah. And God wants them to feel their true feeling, anger, rather yeah. than feel like everything's warm and fuzzy. <laughs> what, where's my love? And not yeah. getting any because yeah. you're not being sincere and not being honest, you see. So... The feelings have to come from the real soul feelings, mm -hmm. not from what you hope your real soul feelings. <laughs> or what you think you should be you feeling. Think you should be feeling, yeah, yeah. but rather what they really are. And this yeah. is where most people get very stuck. Yeah. Most of them, most people try to manufacture feelings in the soul through prayer, mm. which is not real prayer. It's just the mind it's that a, works. It's a, it's the lesser creation attempting to manipulate the higher creation. Correct. Yeah. And and it's not even sincere. No. Because the real soul's emotion is very different yep. to what the intellect is saying I should have. And that's this that's the state of sincerity is the state of the soul. What the soul really wants is so what, what it's is sincere. really in my soul at the moment. Am I really angry with women? Then you're going to have to work through your issues of anger yep. with women. You're going to have to pray about that issue yeah. to be sincere. Yeah. That's what you're going to have to do. Yeah. You're really angry men, it's the same. You can make out you're not angry, right, and say, I'm not angry, I'm really happy with everybody, ah, la, la, la. <laughs> and we see a lot of people who come from the age backgrounds in particular and also Christian backgrounds mm. and religious backgrounds. They all seem to have this. And just a lot of people in general. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people in general, but but more so these pioneer yeah. backgrounds because there there is this underlying moral thing going yeah. on that says, oh, it's really bad for you to have that feeling to be angry, to be angry, yeah. or to be you know to have that dissatisfied that fear. Like yeah. men, men in particular feel you can't acknowledge fear. And men in particular don't like acknowledging grief. You know, yeah. women they let themselves acknowledge grief, but they. But with fear, it's like, no, fear is something that men have to sort out for me, you know. And so there's a whole heap of things in that that are the real soul feelings. Yeah. yeah. And those real soul feelings are what God wants to feel from you. Yeah. An acknowledgement of them and a desire to work through them, a desire to be sincere about them, those real nitty gritty, harsh soul feelings that you want to deny that you even have they are the ones god's interested in yeah god's like a really good friend who really wants to know you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and really wants to know everything about you including all this mess that's inside yeah. and god wants that to be the real thing that you talk about with god yeah not not this whole intellectual games we play yeah and have a tendency to play on earth because of our history you know and, and being brought up to do so mm -hmm. So that's what God's interested in. And, and this, is, this is very important understanding prayer. Mm -hmm. Prayer is this real raw, nitty gritty, real feeling that you have, not this make out, fluffy, I, I hope I have a desire or I really have a desire, but I'm very unwilling to deal with this issue and I'm very unwilling to deal with that issue. That issue. God wants to know every issue you're unwilling to deal mm -hmm. with. And he wants to know that you know that you know yeah. that you're unwilling to deal with it as well. <laughs> yeah, so we could say that prayer is intensely emotional. Yes. Just as the reception of divine love is intensely emotionally overwhelming. Yes. Of course, we can't match the intensity of God's love, but we do have to. It's like, to me, it's like having everything all the skin in the game you know you you yep. are committed in this prayer it's yeah. it's involving all of your heart not just a little segment while you watch telly yeah, or... it's like the ham and eggs thing isn't yeah, it? yeah. we, talking about we often day. talk about the ham and eggs thing yeah. to give it for our viewers for ham to be made the pig is really committed <laughs> yeah. he dies yeah. to give you the ham for the egg to be contributed all the hen has to do is lay it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and the hen's not committed the hen yeah. goes on and still continues their life yeah. and and really you know a lot of people's prayer is like the egg deposited yeah. by the chicken you know yeah, it's just yeah. a little deposit and <laughs> yeah, move on with the rest of their yeah. life you know yeah. but but uh, you know god wants us to have our full heart and our full motivations involved in everything that we do yeah yeah and not eat ham or eggs <laughs> not, and not eat ham and eggs yeah. is, a, is a good thing but you know to god that's less important in fact yes. than how we treat people exactly and so treating people badly or even treating yourself badly yeah. Um, 
Well, and and really the worse. theme of our discussion here today, you're saying as well that the preparatory state of, uh, you know, about the the issues regarding love, being willing to change that, yeah. regarding truth and humility, regarding sincerity and faith. That's even more important than what we're doing what we eat, day to day. How and clean we are. <laughs> yeah. Although you will become clean sorting well, out those issues the thing, and, the and you will refine out. what you eat sorting out those issues. But, you know, that's a byproduct. But the truth is we can have a sincere desire and aspiration in those areas while we're still actually quite unethical and immoral. Yes. That's how people in the hells yeah. actually progress. Yes. And it's how some Trust of them me, progress Trust me, there are many vegetarians than... and vegans who pass into the hells of the spirit world, yeah. just like there's many Christians who do. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. people who treat veganism or vegetarianism as a religion, yeah. uh, which many people actually do, yeah. uh, are just going to be passing in just as bad a state as anybody else yes. <laughs> who has been unloving to their fellow man. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so, yeah, the, okay. the key to understand here is that, you know, this, this, this heartfelt, raw feeling has to be presented mm. to God. Mm. And, and this is where most people are very unwilling. Mm. Mm. Well, a lot of us are even unwilling to just be overwhelmed by our own emotion. Yes. And Let alone present it to somebody is, else. Yeah, prayer mm. is a state of being overwhelmed by our own longing and desire and and reaching out to yes. another person. Yes. Yeah. And you can see how a penitent heart, as we mentioned previously in the message mm. and when we talked about it yesterday, um, you know, a penitent heart is certainly going to help a lot Yeah. because that's going to really help us connect to this raw feelings that we actually have. Yes. And that's obviously very helpful when it comes to prayer with God. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're up to <clears throat> close to the end. Well, I think I have made it plain how this love flows into a man's soul. And in addition, what its effect is when possessed by man. Mm. There is nothing in all God's universe that can take its place for the purpose of making a man at one with the Father and of causing him to become divine insofar as he possesses this love. Mm. Yeah. And so really there... You you have made it plain and we've made it very plain today. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> I hope so. Um, but you've also said just at the end there of causing him to become divine, it's really only insofar as he possesses the love. Yes, That's... there are other qualities of God's nature, God's mm -hmm. substance, which are gifted afterwards. Mm. But all are dependent firstly on God's love being gifted to the human soul yes. and the transformation of the soul into a new creature. And in fact, other aspects of God's nature cannot be gifted to the soul unless love first is gifted to the soul yeah. because the love does the transformation of yes. the soul, enabling the soul to receive other substances mm -hmm. from God. Mm -hmm. so, so without the transformation occurring in this manner, no further thing can be received yeah. from God either. Yes. Mm -hmm. And also you're saying man is becoming divine, but not God. Just, Correct. Just so much as they have some of God's love now residing within them. Yes, and now yeah. the new age concept of having a part of God in you is kind now real. Exists, yeah. But there, yeah. It is true now. Yeah. And it's not at your creation. It's not, at, you know, when you're a perfect natural man. But now that you have received some of God's love into your soul, now you do have a part of God in you now. Mm-hmm. So that is also now a truth. Yeah. And you can see this is what happens many times with earth-based ideas, is there are sort of smidgens of truth mm -hmm. in them, but, but often they then go cause a lot of error, yeah. you know, because they're not properly understood. Yes, mm. yes, mm. yeah. Okay. Okay, so I say to all men, pray and pray and never cease to pray <laughs> for the inflowing of this love. For there is no limit to its abundance or the amount which man or spirit can obtain. Always in the celestial heavens, we spirits continually pray for an increased bestowal and always our prayers are answered. But always there is more to follow. I must not write more to die. I'm satisfied with the correctness of receiving my message and will come again and write you another with all my love and blessings. I'm your brother and friend, Jesus. And I thought the very beautiful point there 
at the end, which you've also touched upon in this discussion, was just there's no limit to mm. the amount of love that we can And this can is a point receive. of logic again. God yeah. is an infinite being. Mm -hmm. God has an infinite amount of love to give. It doesn't matter how much we individually ask for it. We will always receive more if we're in the right condition. Mm -hmm. We will always receive more. And on top of that, we always have the ability to receive more. Mm. And every being God has ever created, every human being God has ever created, will always have the ability to receive more. Mm. And therefore always have the ability to grow further. Yeah. Yes. And, and this and is a point of infinity. It's yes. the, that's the principle of infinity, yeah. which we raised a little in our third assistance, assistance group, did. but didn't cover much about. No. <laughs> uh, and aside from it being logical, it's also immensely beautiful. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, it's yes. just this idea that there's there's always more love that we can receive and mm. and that that's a very beautiful experience, a very overwhelming experience. The other thing is that it, it also gives you the capacity to always finish up giving more love. Yes. So, so it's not only that you've now received more love, you now have a capacity to be more loving in the universe. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so the perfect natural man only has a limited capacity for loving another. Mm. Whereas a person who's received God's love has an ever-growing capacity to love another. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty incredible. Which is, which is wonderful as well. And very beautiful. Mm. And the final thing I loved about your final paragraph is that you used yourself collectively. You know, there's so many um, false perceptions of you and even within the, the celestial heavens and so on. Um, I just love that you said, you know, we spirits, it's us. We're mm. all spirits. We're all the same. Yeah. We're all of us, including yourself um, and your brothers and sisters, we continually pray. Yeah. yeah, I noticed that many people who have read the Paget messages only hypothesize that I am still a different creature mm. and therefore I don't have a soulmate and yeah. things like that. No, I'm just the same. I'm a man just like everybody else was created. I have a soulmate just like everybody else. Um, I have the same potential of receiving God's love just as anybody else. The only real difference is that um, I was the first person to realize it, that's all. Yeah. And even that I was helped to realize yeah. because of God's instrumentality. <laughs> <laughs> so cool, those instrumentalities. Yeah. So I'm no different than anyone else. Yeah. And, and it sort of makes me sad when I hear, you know, people and also, you know, often we get a lot of accusations from media and other people saying, you know, I'm claiming to be God and all these same things. So, such a thing couldn't be further from the truth. Mm. I am the same as anyone else. I have the same potentialities as anybody else. But what I, the only thing that makes me have a different potentiality is God's love and the amount of it that I've received. That's yeah. all. Yeah. And everyone has the capacity to receive the same amount or more. Mm. So why wouldn't you keep asking? Yeah. 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 Mm. Beautiful. Thank you so much for engaging this discussion. Yeah, no, that was wonderful. Yeah. It was really mm. lovely. I think we covered quite a variety of topics of between topics the, the two messages. Which are necessary so that people understand, um, because I feel there's a great misunderstanding when people read the pageant messages. You know, they sort of feel that there's some kind of magical process almost mm. that's not scientific. That and it doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't engage, engage the heart, the heart mm. and doesn't involve personal preparation. Correct. It's just there's yeah. often a feeling, well, I just have to long and, you know, and, it's magic. And, and also there's no real understanding of the word sincerity, mm. you know, where this longing has to be real. It has to be sincere. It has to come from your feelings. It, mm. It's not something you can manufacture. You can't use your mind to manufacture feelings. Yeah. The feelings are there. If your feelings are and an the antithesis of desire, then you've got to get rid of them so that you have desire. You yeah. know, if if your feelings are not sincere, then you've got to get rid of these feelings that are not sincere so that you can have some sincerity. And if yeah. your feelings are not understanding love very much then you've got to get rid of your understandings of love so that you can actually receive god's yeah. love so you know, don't think that there's no work there is effort involved <laughs> as uh, you said as we've said in the yeah. message and and we'd like to encourage people to definitely make the effort yeah we see a lot of people giving up because they want a magical solution mm. and it's not it's not magical it's scientific <laughs> 
it's like everything there's a cause and effect you know? um, yeah and in built into the process even in that preparatory process there's so many rewards there's cause and effect and there's rewards for doing the preparatory yeah. work and and there, there might be some difficulties because the world around you is not geared towards uh, you having this real personal relationship with god but eventually the world may be in the future, but, but we don't want to wait till then, surely. Mm -hmm. Surely you'd be better off enjoying the relationship now than later. And if you feel like you're an atheist and you don't believe in God, well, that's fine. That's just another preparatory thing that you've got to work your way through, you know, and maybe, you know, look at the possibility of God existing. And, you know, if you're a, a religious person of a different, of all kinds of persuasions, well, that's not going to stop you. Why should that stop you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the only thing that's probably going to stop you is every time you receive a bit more of that love and that love does things to you that you then realise you're going to need to do in the world, mm -hmm. the only time you're going to stop is if you're afraid of doing those things. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Wonderful. Mm. Thank you so much, darling, for your my time. My pleasure, baby. Mm. Yeah, my pleasure. And hopefully yeah. everyone has enjoyed it, uh, the, our presentation of this whole series. And remember, there's four sessions here. so. If you're hearing this one, and this is the only one you've heard, our suggestion is, you, well, you've missed out on three prior presentations yes. <laughs> that you probably should have watched in order um, so, uh, before you got to this one to understand our full discussion. Yes, yes. to get the full context. And we'd like to thank our recorders out the back. Yes, um, thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, we'll probably be filming every week or every couple of weeks now, as much as we've got a lot of other projects going on. Mm -hmm. um, but we've, I'm really keen to get started on a number of other projects, yes. another, uh, other, other discussions. Other recording projects and yes. discussions. And um, this is basically just a precur precursor for them because we really, now that we've had this discussion about the divine love again, hopefully what that's done is refreshed everybody about the aims yep. and the goals. And, and how the assistance group is helping you perform the preparatory. <laughs> exactly, work. that the, the assistance group is there as preparation, mm. and this preparation for the soul. And that's going to require some effort, and it's going to require some development mm. in humility, and time, time sincerity, too. yep, and time. And that's all, uh, that's you and I trying to assist to heighten the instrumentalities really. Yes, it? yes. Yeah. So every time we encourage you, we hope that that then gives our brothers and sisters in our celestial spheres our ability to connect to you and so yeah. forth. Yeah. And so this all has a great benefit to you when you're, when, you're, uh, when you're listening. So we're hoping that our discussions, myself and Mary's discussions, will actually help you get into this state where you're really and desirous of really engaging the process and then mm. re-looking at the assistance groups with a renewed enthusiasm yeah. and and hopefully then when we go through our questions together mary and i will go through a series of questions about the groups you'll understand how that all relates to what we've just discussed this importance yes. of receiving why? divine love and why we're so focused on, uh, on helping you do that and why we're so focused on helping you to develop humility and to develop a longing for truth yeah. and to develop all those things. Yes. And I should remind everyone, if you would like to send us questions about any of the material, about any material, but especially uh, in relation to the assistance group series, Education in Love, that we started last year, there was three assistance groups. Mm. You can send questions to faq at divinetruth.com. Please, if you can at all, uh, Allocate it to the talk that you yes. had the question about. If you're watching a specific talk from one of those groups and you realise I've got another question about that, please note down the name and uh, the title you see on YouTube or on your hard disk drive um, of that talk. Particularly the date and the time. The date and the time <laughs> um, and the name, yeah, yeah. That, that will help us a lot. So reference that in your email along with your questions. Yes. Uh, that will help us a lot to organise the questions. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, that ends our day today. That Thanks is. for your, for Thank your company. Thank you, everyone. And we'll catch up with you in the next presentation. Yeah. Cheers, guys.